Personalize the student's learning experience. For a long time, teaching online was simply converting your live course to one that could be accessed on a platform like Blackboard. Students read material, took quizzes, and submitted assignments for grading with an occasional discussion board thrown in. We now know enough about teaching online where that is no longer acceptable. In this video, I'm going to give you a few suggestions for making your course more appealing, interactive, and a better learning experience. The first is structure. This is one area that you do not need to think about for long because the Turo administration has standardized the online course structure throughout the Graduate School of Education. The key area is the coursework by session, where your assignments, reading material, and videos should be available. There is a standard format that all Turo Blackboard courses should have when a student clicks on this link. You can see it in the three modules of this course. With this consistency across all Turo online courses, students will feel comfortable regardless of the course or professor. Developing per personal relationships. As a former high school administrator, I always stress personal relationship building skills to my teachers. There's an adage, students may not remember what you taught, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. This is possible in an online course. First, you need to begin the semester with an introductory discussion board or wiki. I like to do a discussion board to get students used to posting and adding links and attachments. I begin the activity with my own introduction, adding pictures. I update a Wordle below the instructions to, to let students see a piece of technology that they can use in class and what words are most often used in the discussion. I encourage the students to add a picture, video, and to put an avatar in the Turo College home menu personal information, personalize my settings, avatar. This will show students' faces every time they post on the discussion board. You should add yours as well. In my introductory discussion, I ask them to post where they did their undergraduate work, where they are working at the time, and any other personal information they may want to share. I also ask them to share four bullets of things that make them unique. Avoiding comments like, I am loving, I have a wonderful spouse, etc., etc. I add a video to the instructor link explaining my email turnaround, phone policy, and office hours. You can only do this if you create a folder in this area rather than a contact. Responding promptly is another quote unquote big idea of building relationships. I have my Turo email on my phone, so I usually respond immediately if I can. I know the policy is to do it within 24 hours, but I try to do it as quickly as I can. In my evaluations, this has always been a big plus for my students. Even though I have a discussion board for asking course-related questions, they want answers immediately. Feedback and discussion board participation. I've mentioned feedback in a previous video, but I want to emphasize it again here. You can and should make comments in the grading section of the gradebook. Students need to get this personalized feedback from the instructor. There's also a way to release information as students successfully complete assignments, but that's a professional development activity for another time. Uh, discussion boards are only as good as your open-ended question begin the discussion and your participation in the conversation. As I mentioned, my discussions go for two weeks and at the midway point, I like to insert what I call a Dr. Tom's thinking question based on any misconceptions or faulty thinking that I encountered in the first week of the discussion board. You don't have to respond to everyone, but you need to be active. In my courses, I like to add a graphic to anything just to dress things up. Um, if I want students to read or do. Uh, while this is a minor point, it does make the material a little more appealing. You can also use Zoom meeting to have one or two nighttime meetings for anyone who is interested throughout the duration of the course. Uh, one of my colleagues does this twice per semester. Uh, I have yet to try it, but it sounds like a nice way to get to speak to your students in real time. 
They won't all come, but you, you will get a, a group of them that uh, you will get to interact with. Uh, you'll need to contact your supervisor to see how to get a Zoom subscription. I'm not exactly sure because I pay for my own, uh, but I'm pretty sure you don't have to pay for yours. Um, make short videos of your lectures. Try to keep them under five minutes. Many students will look at the length first and decide whether to invest the time. If it's 25 minutes, forget about it. <laughs> I like to give short quizzes on them just to make sure they are watching. Many professors will scoff at giving online quizzes and tests, but I'm a big fan of them. It keeps your students honest. Finally, make a video of your teaching memo after every session and place it in the announcement. In the editing window, click on send a copy of this announcement box so all of your students receive it as an email. I break it down into three sections, housekeeping, any technical issues or assignment confusion from the session before, uh, a previous session recap, uh, any misconceptions and also good points by students, and a summary of the upcoming session and assignments. You should also attach a, a transcript uh, underneath your video as a PDF file. So that's it for this in online indoctrination. Good luck, and don't forget to take the quiz at the end.